Order! Order in the court! Man is on trial for his life. If there are any more interruptions by the public, I shall order the courtroom cleared. The prosecutor will continue his cross examination of the defendant. Now, Mr. Kemp, how much did you earn last year? You mean from my machine shop? From all sources. About $3,600. And with this $3,600, you had to support yourself, your mother, and buy equipment for the shop. That's right. But you're ambitious, Mr. Kemp. I don't understand you. Uh, you're an inventor, aren't you? Uh, didn't you invent this supercharged blowtorch marked Exhibit B? Yes. And isn't this blowtorch more powerful than any other similar piece of equipment on the market today? Yes, but I've already told you this. This invention power... has a commercial value, then? Definitely. Is it patented? No, but I've already... Oh, please uh, answer the questions. Uh, did you intend to patent it? Yes. Until all this And happens. was it your intention to lease your patent to a manufacturing concern or to build these torches yourself? Myself. I see. Thank you. Now, Mr. Kemp, what would it cost to patent your invention? About a thousand dollars, they told me. And to equip your shop to produce it commercially? About... About five thousand dollars, Mr. Kemp? Yes, somewhere around there. So you stole the five thousand dollars from the corpse of Professor Adrian Sykes? I didn't steal it! Sustain! I will rephrase the question. This cancelled bank book shows that Professor Sykes withdrew from his account five thousand dollars on the day he met you for the first time. Your bank account shows a corresponding deposit is that correct? I guess so. Now, Mr. Kemp, how would you, a mechanic earning $3,600 a year, obtain such a large sum of money? From Professor Sykes, but I've told you... his dead body after you killed him? No! After you burned him to death no. in the courts? The prosecution will avoid prejudicial remarks. With the court's permission. Now, Mr. Kemp, you have testified that Professor Sykes gave you $5,000 as a fee for services to be performed by you and your blowtorch. Now, I ask you, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is it credible that a man like Professor Sykes, a timid archaeologist, would give you, a total stranger, his entire life savings to accompany him on a mission I can only describe as fantastic. I know it sounds fantastic, but... And the you'll... state contends that it is. The state contends that you deliberately invented this story of non-existent caves and incredible machines to cover up a sordid case of murder for profit. A case, ladies and gentlemen, unusual only for the horrible manner in which the crime was no! committed. Do you have evidence for the I didn't kill Professor Sykes. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have heard the testimony of the witness in the case for the prosecution and defense. I must point out to you that the case for the state rests solely on Maybe circumstantial I evidence. Let you take the stand. We might have done better with a temporary insanity defense. Don't you believe me either? Anyway, I, I did the best I could. But you don't believe me. Well, it sounds so fantastic. We couldn't Adrian find the case. Sykes. We couldn't it find the machine. But it's true. Everything I told you is true. I've told him everything I know. Police, the judge, the jury. But what's the use? I know what the verdict's going to be. Guilty. And then I'll go back to that. Well, now, take it easy, now. Take it easy. Yeah. Take it easy. Your task, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is to determine the truth on the basis of the facts presented in evidence. If there exists any reasonable doubt in your minds, you must in all conscience acquit the defendant. The jury will now retire and consider its verdict. The court is recessed. <laughs> Want some coffee? No. Nothing to do now, you know. I know. Never tell till the jury gets back. The funny thing about juries, I remember a case once you'd have sworn I'd lost it, and the jury said, <laughs> Shut up, leave me alone. Not guilty, they said. Oh, you could have knocked me over with a feather. And I found out later that the, the foreman of the... Shut up! Let me alone. Okay. Don't mm -hmm. get sore. 
The foreman had twins that morning, and he was 63 years old. Let me alone. Okay, Ma, I'll be up in a minute. You said that an hour ago. Okay. Who are you? My name is Sykes. Professor Adrian Sykes. I'm an archaeologist. Maybe you heard of me. Sykes. No, I don't think I have. No matter. You will. Before long, everyone will. Mr. Kemp, I've come a very long way to see you. I must talk to you. Well, look, you can't I wait till morning. I'm pretty tired. No, it can't wait. The world has been waiting long enough. You see, I... I've found the key to the past. Sure. Sure you have. Look, uh, why don't you come back tomorrow and you can tell me all about it? You think I'm insane, don't you? Maybe this. This would change your mind. Ten gauge wire. So what? Try to cut it. Well? do much better if you use that new supercharged torch of yours. What do you know about my torch? I heard about it from a colleague at the university. That's what brought me here. Look, just what do you want? I need your torch. Well, it's not for sale. Now, if you'll excuse me. I don't want to buy it. I want you to help me to open my metal door. Oh, another one of those, huh? Where's your door, Professor? Is it the uh, First National Bank or Fort Knox? Listen. Do you know what it means to spend your life digging into the past and getting nowhere? Pottery, relics, dust, nothing until you yourself get part of that dust. While others, with less talent but with money and influence, make discoveries that startle the world. The tomb of King Tutankhamun, the Rosetta Stone. Discoveries that make them famous. And then, one day, you yourself, who have always stood in the shadows of these men, on the brink of making the greatest discovery of them all. Well, that's very interesting, Professor, but uh, what can I do about it? Everything. With your torch, you can open the door to my cave. To your cave? I found it by accident, years ago. Inside this cave is a machine. Oh, Kemp, you've never seen such a machine. Now, what makes this one so different? This machine has been recording on a wire every physical disturbance that has shaken the face of the Earth for the past million years. Oh, now really? Every storm, every earthquake, every tidal wave, it's all there on this wire. This is a piece of it. It took me months of work to get it. Sure. I suppose about a million years ago, some ape invented this contraption and then stuck it in a cave, huh? Very smart monkey. Oh, now look, really, I've got to get to bed. I've got to get up early in the morning. Wait, perhaps this. This will change your mind. There's five thousand dollars there. That's all I have. It's yours. If you will open that door. Five thousand. I could buy machinery and start producing the torch myself. Yes, you could. Okay, Professor. You got yourself a deal. When do we start? Tonight. There's no time to lose. Tonight? Camp, I waited for this for years. I can't wait any longer. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Where are you going? I'm just going to tell my... No! 
must tell no one. No one. Be very near. Look, Professor, we we drove all night to get here, and we've been combing this area for hours. And I'm hot, and I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and there's no door around here. It must be. It must be. Look, Professor, I've been thinking. How did you get into that cave the first time if it's sealed by a door? It was open when I found it the first time. And when I returned the second time, it was closed, sealed tight. Who knows? Perhaps I was getting too close to the answer. Yeah, perhaps. But I don't understand it. it. It must be around here. I can't seem to find it. Well, maybe you can't find it because it doesn't exist. Now, look here. I paid you all the money in the world. Instead of grumbling, please, let's try to solve this problem. Okay, Professor, you start figuring. We must be near the cave. We must be. Why, well, I've worked in this part of the country for years. But somehow it's... It's changed. It's... It's different. Perhaps there have been some landslides. There seem to be more rocks and less vegetation. What time have you got? It's 11 15. Oh, my watch stopped. So has mine. At 11.15. But it's past noon. That's funny. Why should both our watches stop at the same moment? Perhaps a magnetic field did it. Look at your compass. Holy smoke. Look at it. That's it. That machine must create a magnetic field around it. We must be very near. Come on. Come okay. On. Kim! Kim, come here, quickly! You didn't believe me. Here it is. It's real. Yeah. Just as I said. It's real. It's here. Beware. There's danger in the sands. Yes, danger to your watch. In fact, what with hot weather activities and sticky temperatures and perspiration, summertime is the worst time for your watch. But it can be a good time, and here's how. Take your watch to a reliable jeweler. Let him check up and dress up your watch. Let him show you how wonderful your watch can look. Your watch will be rejuvenated on the inside, and at the same time, it will be restyled on the outside when your old band is replaced by a new Chrysler watch band. And your most personal possession, your watch, can be personalized too. With the Your Signet Expansion Watch Band by Chrysler, the only watch band that's initial just for you. Yes, your Signet features your initials right in the design. No other band is so completely personal, so exclusively yours. But be sure to ask for Your Signet by Chrysler, the band that makes your watch look better than you. And for the ladies, there's an exquisite feminine version of the Your Signet watch band with your personal monogram. Best of all, these exclusive Chrysler bands cost no more than many bands without initials. Only $9.95 for the ladies. And for men, only $11.95. So check up and dress up your watch. When your jeweler makes your watch run like new, have him make it look like new with Your Signet by Chrysler. And now back to your tales of tomorrow. Verdict from space. You can see it with your own eyes. It's real. Yeah, it's real. It's here. I'll start here, Professor, where there should be a locking mechanism of some sort. The torch hasn't even made a dent in it yet. Listen, 
Inspector, do you hear it? Yes. Something has happened. Something is happening inside the door. It's a heat lock. That's what it is, a heat lock. Well, we don't even need the torch to cut the door. The heat alone will open it. anything like this. This part of the machine is the recorder. The wire running between these two spools records every physical disturbance on the earth. Look, this mark indicates a volcanic explosion somewhere. The date is the destruction of Pompeii. This indentation is a minor tremor on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. The date the date of the San Francisco earthquake. It took me many years to learn what those marks meant. What's this crimp? This is the first mark of its kind on the wire. The date was July 16th, 1945. July 16th. The day the first A-bomb was exploded at Alamogordo. Right. And here is the second crimp, Hiroshima. But who could make a machine like this a million years ago? Who? I don't know. But before I'm through, I'll find out. And history will be written from the day I speak. Professor, what does this part do over here? I haven't gotten around to that one yet. Wait. This isn't just another part of the recorder. This is something different. It looks like... Like it's a transmitter. But well, sure, and this must be the antenna. No, it could be Yes, it is a transmitter. Maybe whoever put this machine here was waiting until something important happened. Oh, we've got, to, we've got to get the Army Intelligence right no, away. Oh, no, no, I tell you, this machine is harmless. It's been here before there were armies, or before there were cities, or a civilization. Look, I've listened to this rock long enough. Now, come on, we've got to get out of here. Look! The wire! It's recording something right now. Another crimp. What do you make of it? Looks like an A-bomb, only much bigger. Whatever it is. This transmitter is sending out that information. This is what it's here for. It's got to be stopped, Professor. Oh, you can't destroy it. It's my discovery. It's my life's work. Stop you can't destroy it. Get out of my yes. way, Professor. You can't destroy it. Watch out, Professor. Watch out, Professor. No, I don't want to come in there. Oh, You've ruined it. You've ruined it. All my work. All my hope. Come on, we've got to get out of here. The whole thing is going to blow up. to a doctor, Professor. No, no, too late. It's too late, Kemp. You'll be okay if we can just get you to a doctor. Listen to me, Kemp. Promise me. You must tell them everything that has happened. Even if they don't believe you, you must tell them that I discovered all this. That it was I who... reached their verdict. They'll be coming back in.
This court is now in session. Everyone will rise. The defendant will rise and face the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. What is your verdict? We find the defendant, Gordon Kemp, guilty of murder in the first degree. On the basis of the facts as presented in this courtroom, I feel that the jury has arrived at the only possible verdict. I wish to thank the jury for the fine services it has rendered to the state. Gordon Kemp, you have heard the verdict arrived at by a jury of your peers in open trial. Have you anything to say in explanation or in extenuation before sentence is passed upon you? I didn't kill Professor Sykes. I'm not guilty. I've told you that again and again. You've had your chance, but you wouldn't listen. I tried to explain what that crimp in the wire meant the day the professor and I were in the cave. That wire recorded the first H-bomb explosion. I, I didn't believe what Professor Sykes told me, but now I know. Somewhere in this universe, someone has been watching us for a million years, waiting until, until we had the secret information when we could power a super-atomic type torch. The deadliest enemy that we have ever had to face is out there in space ready to destroy us now that we have the H-bomb. <laughs> right now, this very minute, he is out there. They're, they're coming. I don't know when they're coming. By who, Mr. Kemp? Who received this information? I, I don't know. Someone out there. Someone out in space. Someone who knew that we could threaten them as soon as we had the H-bomb to power spaceships and fight wars in space. <laughs> the verdict of this jury is that I am guilty of murder but I am not guilty of anything else that may happen to you or to your wives or to your children. I've tried to tell you everything I know about it. Everything that Professor Sykes told me was true. They're coming. I don't know when they're coming, but they're coming. Somehow they have found that, that we have developed superatomic power, and now we can be a threat to them. And they don't want that, and they're going to stop us. I don't know when they're coming, but they're coming. And when they do, maybe you'll realize... Look! Look up there in the sky! Spaceships! Thousands of spaceships! jury reached. The final verdict was delivered from space. And now let us leave Tales of Tomorrow and consider something that is very important for you today. Uh-oh, she's heading for trouble. Yes, trouble for her watch. What with playing and hot muggy weather and perspiration, summertime is the worst time for your watch. But it can be a good time. And here's how. Take your watch to a reliable jeweler. Let him check up and dress up your watch. Let him show you how wonderful your watch can look. Your watch will be rejuvenated on the inside and beautified on the outside when your old band is replaced by a new Chrysler watch band. Ask your jeweler to show you the Elegant, today's greatest value in ladies' expansion watch bands. Imagine Elegant costs only $4.95. Yes, only $4.95. Notice its simple classic beauty that's always in fashion. Elegant goes with all your clothes. And Chrysler's Elegant watch band is as light as a feather. So delicate, you can scarcely feel it on your wrist. Notice the convenient telescopic expansion that quickly allows you to slip your watch up out of the way for household tasks. And the Chrysler Elegant carries the same guarantee as bands costing many times more. No other telescope expansion band at so low a price is made to wear so well and last so long. Yes, it's all yours for the unbelievably low price of $4.95. So check up and dress up your watch. When your jeweler makes your watch run like new, 
Have him make it look like new with Elegant by Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. On my hand. On your hand. Initial just for me, and so it's my van. It's your van. It's Chrysler. It's Chrysler. For me too. For you too. Makes your watch look better than new. Quality, style, and value too. One of the best bands, bands in the land. It's Chrysler. <laughs> Makes your watch look better than new. Makes it personal just for you. It's Chrysler. Tomorrow's show is called Blunder. A great blunder, where there is a scientist who is working on a blunder, which may bring death to us all. Listen next week to Tales of Tomorrow. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.